Hello, I'm Dr. Nathan Gellert. Before learning about the techniques of motivational interviewing, it's important to learn about the mindset and heart set of MI, which I'll be discussing in this video. The spirit of motivational interviewing consists of four parts. First, motivational interviewing is a collaboration, a partnership. It's done for and with a person, not to or on them. MI is like a dance rather than wrestling. A good MI conversation looks as smooth as a ballroom waltz. Importantly, too, someone is leading. MI involves compassion, which means to actively promote the other's welfare and to give priority to their needs. Without compassion, MI is simply marketing or manipulation. Compassion is not just a feeling or emotional attachment, but rather a commitment to pursue the welfare and the best interest of the other. Motivational interviewing involves evocation. This means an exploration of the client's own beliefs. Motivation to change is elicited from the person, not externally. Our job is to draw out a person's own perceptions, goals, values, not to instill what's missing. We assume the resources and motivation for change reside in the client. We do much more listening than talking. We listen and value the client's own ideas about what might work best for them. This requires trust and letting go of the belief that the counselor knows best. I'll talk about acceptance on the next slide. Acceptance is also comprised of four parts. Absolute worth means unconditional positive regard. This means you respect the person as they are. It doesn't mean you have to like them, you just respect them as a human being. Autonomy means we value the other's right and capacity for self-direction. Affirmation means we seek to acknowledge a person's strengths and efforts. Affirmation means we seek to acknowledge a person's strengths and efforts. In MI, this is called validation. Accurate empathy involves taking an active interest in understanding the client's internal perspective. It's very different than sympathy. Sympathy is a feeling of care and concern for someone. However, sympathy, unlike empathy, does not involve a shared perspective or shared emotions. Again, importantly, acceptance does not mean we necessarily approve. Let's talk about the characteristics of motivational interviewing to summarize some of what we've said. Motivation for change can be shaped and is particularly formed in the concept of relationships. No one is completely unmotivated. We all have hopes and aspirations. The way in which we talk to people can influence their motivation for change. With motivational interviewing, we work from within a partnership instead of an uneven power relationship where the counselor is the expert. Instead of giving people what they lack, be it medication, knowledge, skill, or insight, MI seeks to evoke the person's own motivations and resources for change. Even though the person may not be motivated in the direction you would like, every person has personal goals, values, aspirations, and dreams. Part of the art of MI is connecting behavioral change with a person's values and concerns. This can only be done by understanding the person's perspectives and evoking their own good reasons and arguments for change. There needs to be a certain detachment from outcomes. Not an absence of caring, but an acceptance that people can and do make decisions about the course of their lives. By acknowledging the person's freedom not to change, it makes change possible. With MI, there is an acceptance that people make choices, and despite what helpers may tell them, they ultimately make the decision. It is also important to highlight what MI is not. MI does not involve arguing that the client has a problem that needs to be changed, or offering direct advice or prescribing solutions without actively encouraging the client to make his or her own choices. It also does not involve using an 
authoritarian or expert stance while leaving the client in a passive role. MI also does not involve doing most of the talking and focusing solely on imparting information. It doesn't involve allowing primarily the client to determine the content and the direction of the work. It also does not involve behaving in a punitive or coercive manner. If you find yourself doing these things, then you're not living the spirit of motivational interviewing. Thanks for joining me for this video. In the next video, I'll be talking about the method, the four processes of motivational interviewing. These are the four processes, the doing of motivational interviewing, that make up the technical aspects of MI. Please click the subscribe button to receive notifications when new videos are published. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button.